Hey, I hope you guys had a fun time on your trip. Just wanted to get you a little video of some insight on what just a training session with all three of them would look like. Sometimes I'm by myself doing this, which can kind of be tricky with three remotes, three e-collar remotes. And they do have e-collar remotes that you can put uh, three units on. So you could have one remote for three dogs. And that can be really beneficial. I actually own one of those because I myself have three dogs. And so sometimes it can be kind of tricky with one remote. But where I'm working with these guys um, is having them learn to think independently from one another. They actually perform obedience pretty well together. So if I ask them to heal together, if I ask them to place together, and those things we definitely want to keep working on so that when we have all three of them together, they can hold a down stay, they can go to a place command. But in this video, I'm just showing you another type of training session I've done with them throughout their stay. And that's just having them think independently from one another. So this is hard for all of them for different reasons. So sometimes Toby wants to turn his brain off and just pay attention to what Jack or Harley are doing and not have to think for himself. And so I use a lot of leash with Toby. So we are using the e-collar, but I'm showing, I'm showing him where I want him to be with the leash. So that way he's not confused and there's a lot of really clear communication with body language and um, he's not just feeling the e-collar and not understanding what to do with it. So Jack and Harley are a little bit further along with e-collar training where they've done sessions before and they've used it for, for a couple years now. Um, so here I'm just working Jack off leash around the other dog. So he's dragging a long line because occasionally, and you'll see here in a second, he'll run up to Alexis for um, some right here. So she's like, well, if it might be easier to kind of listen to her because she's handling Harley. And so I am using the leash to just follow through with him and get his attention back on me. And meanwhile, Toby's just in the back holding a down stay as Alexis is working Harley. So there's a lot going on. <laughs> there's a lot of name calling and how we've released dogs from commands is just by saying their name. So for example, we would say, Toby, come as the other dog is maybe holding a place command or a down stay. And sometimes it's tricky, like right there, Harley broke the command and so Alexis just follow through with some e-collar and some body language and so it's really important so for Jack sometimes he gets a little bit codependent with Harley and wants to just kind of turn his brain off and flee to whatever he's doing and and sometimes Harley just is a little bit more high strung so these are the things that we're working through they all can do it they're all very intelligent dogs and very capable and really driven dogs um and so we just want to make sure that we're holding them accountable for the things that they know right here. Toby is watching Jack hold it down. And so he gets a little sticky to Jack. And so I'm just following through with that leash and showing him where he needs to be. So he, you know, we get that follow through from myself because ultimately if they're leading each other, they're not going to behave well together. So more than likely if one dog is barking, the other two are going to chime in. If one dog is stressed, the other two are gonna feel it and it's going to make things really hard. And so I don't know if you see those kinds of things at home. Occasionally I would see that when a dog would bark, the other guys would, would chime in. And so we wanna make sure we're just following through, giving them lots of affection and treats when they're doing what they are supposed to be doing and um, being prepared. So right here, just making sure that I'm prepared with the leash for Harley as he broke the down and then just following through. And so I'm even kind of taunting him a little bit by saying puppy, puppy, puppy. And I want him to be able to hold the command and understand when it is time to get out of that command. It's when I say your name and I tell you to come or I say, okay, Harley. And that way, you know exactly that I'm talking to you and um, not the other dogs. And you don't just get up just because there's a kissy noise or something like that. And then at the end, we let him play. So I think that that's really important too. Let him be a dog, let him have fun, let him sniff the grass, run around, chase the ball, go potty on things. Like that stuff doesn't bother me. So Toby did um, a lot better in the last couple of weeks with marking um, behaviors. So I don't care if he does it outside, um, but you know, obviously in the house, those are things we don't wanna do. So the first week we 
um, did a couple corrections and he seemed to understand what he was supposed to be doing. Also, I think with Toby, it's a state of mind thing. Just working on structure can really help. So 